Hi, my name is Mr. D and today I want to take a look at proving triangles congruent with the angle-angle side postulate. So we have given AB is parallel to DE, AE and BD intersect at C, and C is the midpoint of BD, we want to prove that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle EDC. So the first thing we should do with this problem and any triangle proof is mark up the diagram based on the given information. We were told that AB is parallel to DE. So to indicate this, we could draw in two arrows going in the same direction because this represents the idea that AB is parallel to DE. Next, we're told that AE and BD intersect at C. Now, we can't really mark up the diagram based on this, but because we were given that information, it activates a few theorems that we could use. And then last, we were told that C is the midpoint of DB. And what this tells us is that if C is the midpoint of DB, then DC is congruent to BC. Because if C is the midpoint, it's in the middle, and it separates this line segment into two congruent pieces. So once we get to this stage here, it may be a little bit difficult to see what to do next. But when you get stuck, think about why they told you certain information. And what I mean by this, we could look at the given information again. We were told that AB and DE are parallel. So if we think back, when parallel lines are cut by a transversal, we want to look for the Z shape here. And what that tells us, when we have this Z shape, we have alternate interior angles. So when we're told that two lines are parallel, look for alternate interior angles, or more specifically, look for that Z shape, and you could say that those angles are congruent. So in our diagram, if we look for this Z shape, this tells us that angle B is congruent to angle D. But if we had drawn the transversal the other way, notice that if we started with two parallel lines, we could also have this Z going backwards. So when we have the parallel lines being cut the other way, we have a second pair of alternate interior angles. So not only are angle B and D congruent, we could say that angle A is congruent to angle E, because notice they kind of form a backward Z in some ways. So now that we have the diagram completely marked up, it should jump out at us the postulate that we could use. Notice that we have, in both triangles, two pairs of congruent angles and a pair of congruent sides. So we're going to use the angle, angle side postulate. Now the reason why we're not using angle side angle is notice that the tick mark is not between the given pair of congruent angles. Notice here that these pairs of congruent angles, the tick mark is located outside. It's not included in between. So that's why we're not using angle side angle. This doesn't count as a tick mark, the symbol we use for parallel lines. So right here, notice if the tick mark was between, we would use angle side angle, but because it's not, we're using angle angle side. And now we write this out beforehand because this is going to help us structure our proof. So we start off with statement one. And the first thing you should state is get rid of all the given information. So we could say that AB is parallel to DE. The reason why this is true, this was given to us. We could say it all in one line, but if you want to break it up into steps, we can. For two, we could get rid of the next piece of given information. We have AE and BD intersect at C. And this is true because it was given to us. And then the last piece of given information is that C is the midpoint of DB. point of db and the reason why this is true also because this was given to us so once we have all the given information listed now we start marching through the proof notice we still have to establish a pair of congruent angles a second pair of congruent angles and a pair of congruent sides in order to close out this proof so we're going to start with a pair of angles if we start with these two angles here we could say that angle A is congruent to angle E. And think about why is this true? Why are angle E and angle E congruent? Well, we use the concept of alternate interior angles since AB and DE were parallel and this transversal AE forms those alternate interior angles. 
To be formal, we're going to say the alternate interior angles theorem. So that's all we need to state. The alternate interior angles theorem. And to abbreviate theorem, I'm going to write THM like this. So then the next thing we could state is that angle B is congruent to angle D. Because notice we established a pair of angles. If you want to keep track as you write the proof, this is usually a good idea, but we established a pair of congruent angles. So next we're going to establish our second pair of congruent angles. So the next pair of angles to target are angle B and angle D. So we're saying angle B is congruent to angle D. And think about why is this true? Why are those two angles congruent? Well, they're alternate interior angles formed by parallel lines A, B, D, E and transversal BD. So we're going to write the same exact reason that we wrote for 4 once again. We're using the same reason, alternate interior angles theorem. So we have alternate interior angles theorem. Now if you wanted to, so not to sound redundant, you could have in one line said angle E is congruent to angle E and angle B is congruent to angle D. But I'm just showing it out systematically so we see it in all of the steps. So now we can check off a second, our second A because we established a second pair of angles congruent. So the last thing we need to do before we close the proof is establish a pair of congruent sides. So for 6, we have to think about, well, which sides are the same? We know that BC is congruent to DC. So BC is congruent to DC. And we have to think about, well, why is this true? How did we know that these two line segments were the same? From the given information, we knew that C is the midpoint. So for the reason, we're going to say the definition of a midpoint. Now, if you wanted to be really thorough with your reason, you could say, a midpoint separates a line segment into two congruent parts. Multiple, there's multiple ways to state it, but I find the most effective one and the simplest is just to say the definition of a midpoint. So now we go over to our diagram here and we could check off the S. And notice we've established a pair of congruent angles, our second pair of congruent angles, and our pair of congruent sides. So now we have enough information to finish this proof. And just so you know, with all proofs, the last statement that you write is the statement you're trying to prove. So now we have enough information to say that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle EDC. And the reason why this is true, we knew this from the beginning before we wrote anything, we're using the angle angle side postulate. We don't need to write postulate, AAS is sufficient, but just to kind of summarize everything, if two triangles share two pairs of congruent angles and a pair of congruent sides that are not located between the two pairs of angles, then that's enough information to show that the two triangles are exactly the same. Okay, well this is going to conclude this video on writing a triangle proof with the angle-angle side postulate. Thank you all for watching and I hope that this was helpful.